Hello, welcome back to How to Learn a Language, the podcast all about how to learn a language. It's kind of in the name. My name's Lindsay and I am your host. And this episode, we're going to be talking about your language learner personality. So I'm really excited to talk about this. Um, But before we get into it, I I forgot last episode to share my um, little podcast recommendation. And so actually, it's it's kind of apt because one of the things I've been working on these past few weeks is updating one of what is now like the biggest, <laughs> like longest blog posts um, that I have, which is all about how to use podcasts for language learning, how to find new podcasts and a huge list. In fact, I updated it. There's now over 800 podcasts there in over, I think it's over 123 languages. Um, So yeah, it's kind of huge. So I'm not going to recommend one podcast episode this week. I'm going to recommend that huge, massive, massive, massive list. And because it is so big, I'm currently in the process of breaking it down a little bit into separate blog articles for like specific languages. Um, But while that's happening, there is a, to make it easier to navigate and and figure out what's best for you and your level and all of that, I've put it all together in one really, really easy to um, navigate table, which is in Airtable. And you can get this completely free when you join my email list. It will get sent to your inbox and then you have access. You can just bookmark the link and it's there forever. So highly recommend that. If you go to um, the website, lindsaydoeslanguages.com, and then if you go to blog, it's that like the most recent one about podcasts, the ultimate list of language learning podcasts. And um, yeah, it's it's there. You'll be able to get the the list there for you as well. All right. So that's my podcast recommendation. Over 800. Last summer, about a year ago now, I shared a quiz and I'm actually going to be switching it up. And so because I'm getting rid of the quiz, I wanted to um, put all of that information from the quiz into one blog article and into one podcast. Hello, hello. Um, And that's what this is. So you may be like, oh, this sounds familiar. And yeah, maybe you took the quiz last year. Maybe that's, that's why it sounds familiar. But the reason that I made this is that one thing I just want to shout from the rooftops about language learning is that we all learn differently, right? And with that said, it then becomes really useful to know yourself and to know more about your language learning personality, language learning style, to help you to create better language study that fits you. So if your Myers-Briggs result is in your Instagram bio, if you ask people's Enneagram before their name, this is for you. But equally, if you're like, Lindsay, what the heck is an Enneagram? I don't know. It's still for you because regardless of how much you enjoy the sort of personality tests and stuff, just in general, knowing more about who we are helps us understand how we can better approach things and in our case, better approach language learning for us. And given as well that a core foundation of my work teaching you how to learn languages is all about centering yourself, it really does kind of help when you know yourself, right? However, much like our fuller personalities, as in not just language related, we are multiple. This is really, really important. Cue pause, cue big moment. We are multiple. We're never just one thing. And at times we may float towards one tendency, which we've previously been um, kind of less aligned with, maybe we were more aligned with another, but then we find ourselves drifting to something else. And this is totally normal, right? Humans grow, change, we're dynamic, we don't stand still, which means that your language learning likely doesn't stand still either. So as useful as it is to find the aspects that you relate to the most, I really encourage you not to over-identify with any particular aspect or aspects before we get started. Why? Because when we over-identify, this can really inhibit us from moving forward. For example, how many times have you heard someone say, oh, I can't dance, I've got two left feet, or, oh, learn French, I would love to learn French, but I'm not a language person. 
When we over-identify with these sorts of labels, I've got two left feet, I'm not a language person, we limit ourselves by closing off potential new experiences. So it's always worth remembering that knowing this stuff helps us to better adjust our current language learning routines, resources, habits, etc. However, it's also really fun just to be a bit open-minded about it, about experimenting with things that don't typically fit, quote-unquote, with our language learning personalities. And I've divided this into four core areas, and you'll likely align more with one than the other from each of those four core areas. So there's two um, options for each of the four areas. You're probably going to find yourself aligning more with one than the other. This gives you a well-rounded idea of your overall language learning personality. So you've got four areas, and then there'll be four results from each of those areas to create your unique option right so for example you could be and this will make sense in a minute you could be a devotee plus solo studier plus dab hand plus magpie right and if you're like magpie (laughs) dab hand what are you talking about it will all make sense in a minute and knowing this stuff then really helps you to play to your strengths and work on your weaknesses as well right because it's not just about going oh I am this therefore I do this really well it's also about knowing oh I'm more likely to um, approach language learning this way and the weakness of that is that I don't do xyz therefore if I want to do more xyz I need to do this to help me enjoy that more whatever it is right so are you ready Let's get into this. And before we get started, you may want to write this down. You may want to have a little notepad and just make some notes as as I'm talking. Alternatively, there is the blog article to accompany this podcast. And so everything that I'm going to say is in that post. So you've got all of the notes um, in one place as well. So, you know, if you're thinking, oh, that's a lot to write down, don't worry. But if you do, you may want to just make a note as you go. All right, then. So the first core area of your language learning personality. Are you a language devotee or a dabbler? So the one language devotee, there's only ever been one foreign language that's had your heart, right? And that works for you. You're totally devoted to learning that language to the highest, deepest, most intimate level. And this means you've got great potential to be super laser focused with what you do and how you spend your time to learn this language. I've got a um, useful um, blog as well that I've linked in the blog article to help you further with this. If you think, yep, that is me, I am the the one language devotee or maybe even the the, the sort of two language devotee. And um, yeah, if, if that's you, then definitely head over to the blog and there's a link there to a post I've written called Speedy Gains and Steady Growth, What Successful Language Learning Looks Like, and that's going to help you a little bit more specifically. Alternatively, if you're like, nope, (laughs) I'm not here for one language, then you're probably the Lemmy Adam dabbler. So it started small, right? A bit of Spanish in school, a weekend dipping into Duolingo Japanese there, But before you could say 7,000 languages, you've got multiple languages on the go and you're stressing out daily about how to maintain them all. And this is often the dabbler's biggest struggle, right? Balance and making time for all the languages that you want to learn. Too many languages, not enough time. But the beauty of being a dabbler, however, is that you are open to exploring, which can help you to keep going with languages when things get difficult. And I do have a specific blog for this as well, a really, really useful article, how to learn multiple languages at once. Again, much like this podcast, the name kind of (laughs) gives you an idea of what to expect. Um, So that will help you out there. So yeah, have a think. Do you feel like you are more of a devotee or a dabbler? Second, are you solo or community? So the solo studier, does this sound like you? You've never needed anyone else along your language journey. Sure, you speak with tutors or others when you need to, but it's not your preferred way to learn a language. But this doesn't mean that you necessarily lack confidence speaking or listening in real life situations. Instead, it means you're better at studying solo. And there's a huge plus there, lots of internal motivation to get stuff done and keep making progress. And I want to be really clear on that, that if you think, yeah, I'm solo studier, that doesn't 
equate to shy. It doesn't equate to lack of confidence or anything like that. Those things could be part of your kind of uh, language learning style, but that's not what this is. Solo study just means that, yeah, you have lessons when you need, but you do most of your stuff solo. And if this sounds like you, I have a very useful blog for you, how to become a better language learner. Um, I will try and link to these as well in the description. So you've got all of them there. Alternatively, you could be more on the side of the community craver. So you love learning languages for one big reason. People, a lover of connecting with others through language, speaking is usually a priority for community cravers. And that doesn't mean that it's always easy and there will be times when the words don't come, but getting out there to practice isn't typically the problem for the community craver. However, solo studying isn't your favourite. You thrive in group settings and learning from others. And when it comes to lessons, meetups and exchanges for you, the more the merrier, right? So you really do well. You really, really thrive when you've got other people involved in some way, if you're a community craver. And I have a very appropriate suggested blog article for you here. Why community is essential to your language learning. All right, then our next area, newbie or not your first radio. So are you a raring to go getter? And if so, does this sound like you? You're learning a language for the first time. And if so, there is no better time than now to learn how to learn a language because you'll avoid all the mistakes that so many of us before have made. I know it's really tempting in the early stages to put your everything into a language and really give it your all and go for it and think, yep, every waking minute I'm going to adjust every aspect of my life. Whew. But we want to avoid burnout. We want to avoid overwhelm. So instead, learn to focus that time and energy on building a steady pace that you can keep up with. And with that, you'll be setting yourself up for much more sustainable language learning for the long term. If this is you, if you're new to language learning, first of all, hello, welcome. I'm very, very happy you're here. And second, the blog that I recommend for you is how to start speaking a new language for the first time. Alternatively, if this isn't your first rodeo, then you could well be a dab hand. You've learned a few languages in your time or you've had many a year learning just one. Either way, you've got a good grip on your language learning. You usually know what you're doing and how to do it. And of course, sometimes confidence dips, imposter syndrome creeps in, but definitely, definitely stay strong. Remind yourself of your experience so far. And remember, as experienced as you may be with learning languages, it's really important to stay open-minded to trying new methods and tools and perhaps even languages because there's just always more to learn. And sometimes... It's the most successful people who feel like they are a dab hand, they've got that experience, but they still struggle to make language a habit. And that's why the blog article I recommend for you, if you identify with this, if you're a bit of a dab hand, three reasons the most successful people can't make language learning a habit. Okay, finally, our final element of your language learning personality. Are you a magpie? or a minimalist. So the magpie, first of all, hoard all the resources. Much like a magpie, you're one for shiny objects and you're drawn to all and any resource that crosses your line of vision. And the advantage here is that you'll always have something to use and you rarely get bored. However, that's if you get to doing something in the first place, because sometimes you can feel completely overwhelmed by all the things that you could be doing and that makes it hard to focus on what you're actually doing. This is all about picking the best resources rather than all the resources. So I have a blog article to recommend for you if you think you're a bit of a magpie. And that is how to pick the best language learning resources for you. Alternatively, you could be the minimalist. So the minimalist likes to keep it simple with one or two core resources at a time. Ah, right? It feels good. You love efficiency. You love well-organized notes. In fact, you're a pro at planning. Sometimes you get curious if you're missing out, but generally the FOMO stays at bay. 
And the big advantage here for minimalists is that you can really focus and take things much deeper with your resources. There's no superficial surface level stuff for you. No. So if you feel like, yep, this is me, but I do sometimes feel that FOMO from time to time, then the article I recommend for you is how to avoid language FOMO and keep learning on your own terms. Okay, so by now, hopefully you've got a bit of an idea of which of the two from each of those four areas you find yourself identifying with the most. And now that you know your language personality, how do these factors combine for you? Now we've got a bit of an idea, we can adjust your language learning patterns to best suit you. One language devotees then. So for you, it's all about one or maybe two core languages. You're not fussed about quantity. It's all about quality. However, without another language to distract you or act as a break from studying another, burnout can come a little easier. So we want to be conscious of helping to avoid burnout for you. So make sure that you're mixing up your activities, resources, perhaps even study routine, Inject lots of fun and be sure to search for music in the language. And film can also work really well as a fun resource too. I have um, a couple of sort of mini courses that can help with this. So Music Maestro, first of all, um, Watch and Learn. So if you're thinking, yeah, I, I really am th just this one language. This is it for me. But sometimes the burnout can come. We want to make sure that it's fun so your motivation stays high. Definitely check out Music Maestro and Watch and Learn as well. All right then, language dabblers. So as we mentioned, <laughs> the biggest struggle that dabblers face is feeling like if they're spending time with one language, then they're not spending enough time and attention on the other 17 that they want to learn right now. The struggle is real. So how do we avoid drowning in a sea of languages that you never feel like you quite learn? It's really simple. You need to plan your balance. And that doesn't just mean 50-50 or 33-33-33 or 25% of my time, 25-25-25, right? It's not that simple because your balance is going to be different to my balance and to his balance and her balance, etc. So, for example, learning Spanish to B2 level before you begin studying Italian which is often the advice, right? Don't learn similar languages at once or learn a language to B2 or this level or that level before you begin studying another. That isn't going to be right for everyone. And for you, especially Dabla, I see you, it's not right for you either. So instead, you have to figure out what balance looks like for you. So for example, perhaps Spanish is your priority. You'd like to pick up some Italian alongside that and you're curious about Tamil. So in this example, Spanish would be the language that you typically spend most time with. It's also the one that you do first. When it comes to balance and when you have a focus or priority language, that's the best piece of advice I can give you is that that is your first port of call, your first go to. And then the Italian and the Tamil become like buffers, right? They're breaks to separate all that Spanish. I also find as well that depending on my goals and levels in a language, what I do and that ratio really changes. So it's like you want to think about how to make sure that one language doesn't just become <laughs> like boring, <laughs> you know, grammar drills, exercises, copying from the book, you know. You want to make sure that you still inject some fun. Just the fact that a language is more your focused language doesn't have to mean that that is the serious one and the boring one, right? There can be fun across the board. Um, and equally, with the sort of buffer languages that you, you know, if you're curious about Tamil in our example, that also you don't necessarily want that to just fall into, oh, well, I never look at a book or open an app or write anything down unless that's what you want it to be right there's no right or wrong and that's what I mean planning your balance is the most important thing here okay next up solo studiers so how do solo studiers learn languages so sure you understand that languages equals people and you really don't mind lessons or classes it's just that most of your learning happens solo. It's kind of how it goes. And, you know, 
honestly, all power to you, hats off. But really don't let the cries of book a lesson, you need to have a lesson every day, every week, whatever, get to you. If you know that the majority of your learning happens best solo, do that and, you know, stick to what you know. But then it does mean that you want to be conscious of making sure that you are um, getting some kind of human contact to practice everything that you've been solo studying, right? And that could be anything from booking a lesson to having an exchange to going to a meetup, even to like watch a film in that language in the cinema. So you're in the darkness, but you're probably surrounded by people who maybe understand a bit of the language too, right? That can work for some solo studiers when you're not necessarily looking for those direct speaking opportunities, but you just want to feel a little bit of not aloneness, right? Because studying solo, by the way, is not studying alone. So that's also worth bearing in mind. Um, And then, of course, if kind of going out to a thing isn't possible, we have the internet. So you could be thinking about how can I, like, put myself out there in a way that feels comfortable to me. It could be social media, et cetera, et cetera. So there's lots of options here. On the other hand, community cravers, as we know, love that community setting and really thrive in that. You can study solo, but you just thrive in a community setting. So you really want to be embracing that. Book all the lessons you want. Join all the language exchanges you want. Find all the study buddies. Do what feels good to you and what like energizes you. Even if you've got some activities that are primarily solo, there's ways for you that you can make that more communal. So if you're thinking, oh, I live in a small town, (laughs) but I thrive on community and there's just nothing online for me right now for this particular language. Oh, what am I going to do? There's ways that we can do it. Like I said, thinking about how you could perhaps share on social media or find a community online that you could share with. So if you've worked on a writing prompt, you've done that solo, try perhaps sharing a spoken recording of that on social media or with um, a friend or family who speak that language via like WhatsApp or something like that, right? Next up, how raring to go getters learn languages. So welcome language learning newbie. You are in a wonderful position as we've said because I'm about to save you so much wasted time. The tendency is to tentatively follow along the course, the book, the app that you pick and kind of not daring to step off that path. Well, I give you permission to take charge and to mix up your learning. There is a blog article that I link to, um, which is the best language learning advice you'll ever know. It's also a podcast episode about two shows back in this feed. So have a little scroll, listen to that first, and you'll learn the best language learning advice I have to offer. That is your starting point if you are a raring to go getter. And dab hands. How do dab hands learn languages? Well, it is all too easy when you've been learning languages for a while to think that you know it all. Admit it, right? It is. I've felt it too. It's totally normal to go through that phase of like, oh, there's nothing new to learn. I've done well so far. I know what works for me. I'm just going to keep on going. Well, today I give you permission in fact I command you to try something new mix things up explore a new language it doesn't matter what that new looks like it could be a resource it could be a language it could be a new tutor whatever it is but through this process not only will you be giving yourself time to settle things that you've recently learned um, because that's important too right to have that time to let things sort of ferment a little bit in your head, (laughs) if we want to use that word. But you also might find your new favorite thing as well. So definitely, if you are a dab hand, this isn't your first rodeo, you've been learning languages for a while, and you feel like you've got it, got it down, mix it up, try something new. I want to see where that leads you. Magpies. So all the magpies out there, the temptation is to grab another resource, buy another app subscription, get another course, but this doesn't always work in your favor. Sometimes you end up overwhelmed with that choice of things that you could do that you end up doing nothing. So my challenge for you is to try spending one week with just one resource. 
And if that sounds like, oh, that's so restricting, how am I even going to have fun? I'm going to lose motivation. No, you won't. Because what I want you to do is think about how you can expand what you do with that one resource creatively. Highly recommend 100 Creative Ideas for Solo Language Learners if you relate to this. So 100 Creative Ideas is my ebook plus digital um kind of supporting content and videos and things like that to to guide you through some of the activities and honestly if you've ever felt bored or stuck or just lost motivation for language learning this will help to revive things and bring things back so if you're a bit of a magpie spend one week with one resource but really get the most from that resource really expand and explore it in new creative ways and minimalists you know that you're the opposite of that you thrive working with less resources so kind of the same question are you making the most of them the risk actually ends up becoming the same as magpies here right you're using fewer resources but how creatively are you using them are you using just one textbook and that feels nice and clean and fresh but you're just going chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and you're not deviating. You're not creating something for yourself. So same advice here. A hundred creative ideas for solo language learners will just help spice things up a little bit. All right, then. That is my summary of language learning personalities and the different sort of aspects and how they all fit together and how you might want to challenge yourself if you have aligned with one. And also a reminder, as I said at the beginning, to not over-identify with anything here, just to think, okay, yeah, that is my tendency, but that doesn't mean that this is a fixed part of my personality that cannot be changed because everything can be adjusted and used as a means to better learn languages going forward. So if you want to learn more about how to best learn languages, now that you know your language learning personality, you are in prime position, then I highly recommend you join the waitlist for Language Life. In Language Life, I teach you how to learn a language, but not in like a cookie cutter, one size fits all kind of way. Thank you very much. It's all about giving you space to create your own best methods alongside support and feedback from me. If you're curious, join the waitlist today. You'll be first to hear when enrollment opens again very, very soon. And there is some exciting new updates that I'm really, really looking forward to share with you. And yeah, new ways to join, all of that stuff. You definitely want to be first in line to hear all about that. And um, yeah, that is it from me this episode. If you have enjoyed the show, then I would very much encourage you to subscribe, to rate, to review, and also share with a friend because sharing is caring. So why not? It's a good thing to do. And yeah, I'll be back very soon with another episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye.